Welcome back. If you've been following along, you should have completed at least the three quests, Jaggy Takedown, Believe the Bullfango, and Harbinger of Terror. These quests are known as Key Quests, which are needed to complete in order to unlock the Urgent Quest, which is needed to complete to progress through the game and unlock later tiers of quests. You can find a list of Key and Urgent Quests online, or just complete every quest that you want to and you'll clear the right ones eventually. There is no wrong answer, try to clear all the quests eventually. I'll be covering all of the key quests and most likely some optionals along the way, if you'd like to follow my series. The next required quest is the first urgent quest of the game, Blue Bear Arjuros. This is the monster that was in that gathering quest, Harbinger of Terror, and is our first official large monster that we will fight. Before we do that though, go to the guild hall up the stairs here and talk to the Hot Spring Feline. They will supply us with both Hot Spring and Drink quests. Completing these quests will unlock and upgrade helpful features. It will be a very important part of this game. You should check this quest list periodically to see if anything new has popped up, like after each urgent quest. Since this is such an important upgrade, I will be covering these quests as well. For now, you should have one hot spring quest, Hot Water Steamed Bullfango, which will require you to slay five Bullfango. You should clear this quest now. There are five Bullfango in Area 5. When you're back, talk to the hot spring feline again and the hot spring will have been upgraded. The effect of the hot spring can be seen in the bottom right when you're in the guild hall. In our case, it will temporarily give us plus 10 to our maximum health. Enter the hot spring area with square to change into your towel that you started the game with, and go into the hot spring and press square to sit down. You can press square to stand up immediately after and still gain the effects, but there are some fun emotes to do as well. This is a multiplayer area, so it can be fun hanging out with your fellow hunters here. The 10 extra health gained this way will last until we return from our next quest, or fall unconscious and are sent back to camp, which is known as carting, whichever happens first. It's a very good buff to have. Back to Arjuros. For the purposes of the guide video, I'll be capturing this monster, as killing a monster is simple enough, you just hit it until it dies. Capturing is a little more involved, and I want to explain how it works and why you would want to do it. I will also use sword and shield, the same equipment as last time. I want to specify right now that you should feel absolutely free to try any weapon you would like with any armor that you'd prefer. The equipment that I recommend will almost always be more convenience over effectiveness. I aim to give an example of a loadout that will be good but not annoying to acquire, but feel free to use anything you would like. I will be covering all of the weapons on a monster that I will recommend doing a bit of farming on soon. Farming in this case, of course, means hunting the monster many times to get materials for crafting weapons and armor. First off, we're going to need some specific tools, namely, a trap of some sort, and some trank bombs. There are two trap types in Monster Hunter, a shock trap and a pitfall trap. Both require a trap tool to make, which can be bought from the item shop. You can buy in this trap tool with a net to make a pitfall trap, or a thunder bug to make a shock trap. Nets are made by combining spiderwebs with ivy. Both trap types have different effects based on what monster you use it on, with some monsters even being immune to shock or pitfall traps, or even both. Drink bombs can be made by combining a bomb material with a tranquilizer. Bomb materials are made from sap plants and stones. Tranquilizers can be bought for 150 zenny, or through combining a sleeper with a parish room. I realize I just said bomb material a couple of times in a row. Hopefully that doesn't tip off the FBI. Fortunately for us, a supply trap and three supply trank bombs will be provided from the blue box during the quest, so we don't need to worry about bringing our own this time. Feel free to bring extra traps and tranks if you'd like, or to use the trap to give yourself an opening as opposed to just for capturing. It can be particularly helpful in a multiplayer setting. Either way, attempting to capture the monster is optional. There are some quests that require you to capture a monster and the quest will fail if you kill it, but if the quest says hunting quest at the top, you have the option to either slay or capture it. Finally, feel free to go to the store and buy some potions and whetstones. You are supplied with items for this level of quest, but it never hurts to be prepared. I'd recommend a full stack of 10 potions and a half stack of 10 whetstones. When I bring less than a full stack of items, I'm just trying to prepare for the case in which my inventory is full and I'm forced to discard something. Feel free to bring a full stack of 20 if you prefer, though you're unlikely to use all of them. Enough talk. Let's hunt. Alrighty. Here I am. Recording live. You know what I hate? When YouTuber types are like... I'm a little sick, so if I sound different, then that's why, but, um, I'm a little sick, so if I sound different, that's why. So, recording live is probably going to be, a, like, a mess, so I'll just have to clean it up in post. I'm not going to do, like, a deep overview of our Juros, because it's pretty basic, honestly. Um, I'm also probably not going to do a, a deep overview of Great Jaggy. I'll start doing, like, you know, 
those types of things later on, but basically if it's your first time fighting Azuros, go to Area 6 and a cutscene will play. Right here. After the cutscene, just start wailing on him. Now, let's talk about what you do. Let me turn my audio down, I'm sorry. Let's talk about what you do when it's your first time fighting a monster, just in general. Number one, just keep your distance from the monster. Try to observe more than you do anything else. Focus entirely on avoiding attacks. See what the monster does. See how that affects the game state. See what else is going on. Like, look, we have three other small monsters in the area. That's pretty worth considering. They're not going to leave. They're going to just stay here. Notice how they're attacking our Juros. That's kind of nice, but they will attack us too. So, there's a decent level of depth to our Juros. There's actually a lot going on that you'll probably never interact with because he dies in, like, I don't know, 50 hits or something like that. But... Let's talk about Sword and Shield first. If you're holding a movement button and you push the circle, you will do a shield slam. You can do that up to two times. The third hit will do a roundhouse slash. You can also do roundhouse slash with uh, by pressing select, which is pretty useful. Or by, uh, in the middle of any attack, hold back and press circle, you will also do the roundhouse slash. So I'm bringing up the Shield Slam specifically because um, there's a new status type in town in Portable 3rd, and that is Exhaust. So let's hit Azuros a bunch of times with the Shield Slam specifically. It doesn't matter where you hit him, just hit him. What this is doing is building up Exhaust, and as you can see, he's already been like draining his stamina from attacking and stuff. So now he's exhausted and he, you know, he lowers down leaving his head exposed, which is his weakest part. There are many different things that can change when a monster is exhausted versus normal versus uh, enraged. Let's see if he does the move that is different. It's not that one, it's just a big swipe. It's not that one. So you know, notice how you can do that two times, be careful with that. He's down here again. Also, if you hit him on the head enough times with this shield slam, you will knock him out like this. This is because the shield does impact damage, and impact damage, I think in every case, will do KO damage as well. Sh Sword and Shield is a very versatile weapon, honestly. That's why I recommend it to anyone starting out. You can learn a lot from just using Sword and Shield. You can learn a lot about using status ailments, you can learn a lot about... There we go, that's the move. So, notice how he only did it two times. He only did it two times because he's exhausted right now. You can tell that he's exhausted because he's drooling. So let's follow him, because he ran away. Normally when a monster gets exhausted, they run away to get some food. He's running here to get some honey. He can also run to area 6, I believe, if we weren't already there, to get some fish, because he also eats that. Because he's a big bear, you get it? He's not exhausted anymore, I don't think. Um, if he was, when he charges like that, he should normally like topple over, I think. Now he's enraged. Well, wait, is he? Look at his mouth. No, he's not enraged. That's a pin attack, by the way. You want to avoid that one more than anything else. That pin attack is special. Well, all pin attacks are special. But if, if you are hit by that, you will be pinned by Arjuros. Uh, if you have honey in your inventory, he will take the honey and throw you away, not dealing like any damage, I don't think, which is pretty fun. Here's that attack again. One, two, three. I know it's three because he's not exhausted. When he is enraged, that will be four swipes. That's pretty important to, to recognize, okay? Because it's a decent opening to attack like that. Now he's enraged, you can tell because he's breathing... Uh, I'm not sure what you would call that. Is it steam? Is it... You can see his breath, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, four. Ah, 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 you see? 
you see. You gotta pay attention to the monster. Pay attention to the game state. When the monster is exhausted, he's less uh, able, less likely. And when he's not exhausted, he's regular. Or she. And when they're enraged, they are more aggressive, they do more attacks, they do more damage, specifically. A really good example of monsters being exhausted and changing their their actions and mannerisms is, uh, I believe, Rathian and Rathalos. When they are exhausted, they cannot use fireballs. They will try to use a fireball, but it will fail, which is pretty damn interesting. So really pay attention to their mouths, pay attention to whether or not they're drooling. Another thing is, if you have meat, like bait meat, you can put it down when the monster's drooling and they will eat it, usually, sometimes, not always. That's a quick uh, pounce attack, it doesn't do anything besides just a little bit of damage. But you want to be sure that you don't stand in front of the monster. Put that in your head somewhere and never forget it. Do not stand in front of the monster. It may sound like common sense, but honestly, the reason is because most monsters, if not all monsters, have some attack that is just too fast to avoid. Or, either way, you don't want to get stuck in an animation in front of the monster because that's where they're most likely to attack from. Not all monsters can only attack from their front, there are some monsters that uh, attack from their backs or their sides. With some monsters actually having main attacks from their back or sides, so... Again, all monsters are different, that's what makes this game so interesting and fun. Pay attention to the monster, pay attention to the game state. Be aware of what you're doing. Don't overextend. Don't overcommit. Don't get hit. Sure, it's a pretty funny ha, just don't get hit. But honestly, focus on not getting hit. Now as you can see, the monster is limping. This is prime candidacy for being captured. Now why would you want to capture a monster? Well. Normally when you kill a monster, you get carves, of course. When you capture a monster, you replace those carves with capture rewards, which will show up in your item box at the end of the mission, at the end of the quest. So to capture a monster, it first needs to be capturable. We saw Arjuros limping, so now the next step is to either trap it or throw trank bombs, but only throw trank bombs if you're sure that you can trap it. If you have not yet trapped the monster, the trap duration will be the longest, especially if they're exhausted. That's a good time to trap. Trap monsters when they're exhausted and it will last longer than normal. But either way, let's put down a trap and lure him into it, which is pretty easy. Arjuros likes to run around, so he'll run into it. And then with our Trank Bombs, throw two at him. Doesn't matter where you hit, just throw two at him. There you go. Captured. Also notice since we trapped him, he dropped a shiny. Be sure to pick that up. Worth noting, you cannot carve Arjuros when they are captured, or any monster when they're captured. So yeah, this is a pretty basic monster. It's the introduction monster. Just take your time. Just because I'm saying, oh, this should be an easy fight, quote unquote doesn't mean that you shouldn't have any trouble with it, especially if you're brand new to the game. Just take your time, be patient with yourself. Like I said, spend more time avoiding being hit than you are actually attacking the monsters. Especially if you're new, just keep your eyes open, look at what they're doing, and see how you can work around it. Now we're in the quest clear. We will get rewards, as you can see down here. Um, there's a red box above, that's the main rewards. You get this no matter what, even if you kill or capture. But the blue thing down here, this will show any part breaks or capture rewards. And so as you can see, instead of our three carves, we got three capture rewards. Now, capture rewards can have different rates at dropping. So sometimes you're gonna wanna capture to get a specific item, other times you're gonna wanna carve. You can't really know unless you like look this stuff up. Uh, capturing is a bit faster, so it's really just up to you. Some monsters cannot be captured, keep that in mind. Yada yada, and then it asks you to save, which you should pretty much always say yes. I don't think there's any reason to ever say no. And then we're back in town. And there you have it, everyone. Our first monster hunt. I hope you guys have a great one. I hope your hunt goes very well. And I will see you next time.